Hello there, this is Michael Gio, and today I want to do a short video related to sport print. Now, there's a lot of information everywhere, books, um, internet, YouTube, about sport print and how to do it. It's very easy, very basic technique, but I want to show you exactly how I'll do it um, and why we have to do it as a mycologist or if you want to identify mushroom this is a very very good tool in order to segregate or to separate certain groups of in this case mushrooms another thing that w that um, you want to do a sport print is to get the sport somehow and from their culture growth uh, those mushrooms, like grow mycelia from those spores, and from there, of course, if, if they're actually edible mushrooms, then of course, enjoy your mushrooms, create spawns, um, which is pretty much in mycelia growing in seeds, and after that, go to substrate, and of course, from there, go to um, any specific substrate for that mushroom to eat. Now, I want to show you something that it's very important. It's pretty much paper, white paper, and also dark. In this case, I use uh, black paper. So I create something like this you would see in the screen, but it has two separate areas. So we imagine that if the mushroom is circular or at least has, uh, it's big enough to put it in here. So you contrast within the white part and the black part and then um, you wait from like 2 to 24 hours depending of you know the actual mushroom and then you observe the print pretty much you will see that's why it's called spore print because all the spores are getting out from the mushrooms and get into the paper then from there you can see um, it's it's not the, it's not the principle uh, characteristic in order to identify a mushroom but it's a great tool to segregate um, uh, groups of mushrooms. A big example Chlorophyllum molybdatus which you can uh, click the link uh, over there uh, if you want to uh, watch a video related to Chlorophyllum molybdatus. That is an agaric with, which is a common name is the um, green sport lepiora. In this case, that mushroom is uh, very characteristic because when they, of course, they have to open in order to release the spores, those spores are very dark green. And you can see on the screen how that would look like after 24 hour or of a spore print. Now, groups like Amanita um, uh, or Amanitaceae, family Amanitaceae, those are white spore mushrooms. So in this case, let's say that you uh, you don't know how to start in order to identify that specific mushroom. Well, you can just start with a spore print. Then, um, if you are looking in a diachotomous key, uh, probably it would tell you the color of the spores, the color of the spore print. And then it segregate either they are white colored or pale or dark color. So you can see the difference in there. Take a look at these different other techniques from these mushrooms. As you can see here, this is a Chlorophyllum molybdatus specimen, or the green uh, sport Lepiota, or uh, false parasols mushroom. Um, it's an older specimen. You see the uh, gills are dry, and it's kind of dry, but for the example purpose, it's fine. So you just cut the stipe, or the stem, then you'd find the paper. In this case, I use in white paper just because I know this is uh, colored. And for the example, I'm using that. So you leave it there and 24 hours, you can get something like this. Now with this type of mushrooms in three to four hours, if the specimen is fresh, you can have it like this one. You can have it in three hours. You can have a lot of spores and you would know the colors. In this case, this is another specimen. This is completely fresh and open. So the pileus is completely open and all the lamellas or, or gills are uh, exposed. So in this case, you can see the contrast between the white paper and the black paper. That way you can notice the difference between um, uh, the colors. In this case, you'll see this is not a spore print in on paper. This is pretty much how it happened in nature. 
I just have these mushrooms growing in these logs and then all of a sudden in a couple of days you can see uh, all the spores got um, exposed and now we have them in these logs. Take a look at that. So in this case when you do a spore print you want to have all these spores in your paper. In order to do a good spore print, you need to have the specimens completely open. I mean by that is the pileus have to be completely open. In other words, it's ready to um, uh, free those spores. In this case, what I'm doing is I collect a young specimen. I'm letting them grow in here um, in my house. And then after they expose the spores or open the pileus, then I can cut them and do the spore print. Another technique is to do it instead of on paper on petri dishes. So empty petri dishes and you put the pileus in here and you wait for those spore prints to happen. Um, a good thing about this one is that first you can see the colors and another thing is that you can contain those spores and on a very um, a better controlled environment so you can use these spores for like culturing or to transfer these spores to grow mushrooms. Like in this example here, well you can see this bucket this bucket contained hay or straw that is pasteurized or sterilized and you can transfer spores from the petri dishes to here and wait until the mycelia develop then of course you can grow um, edible mushrooms um, from here and you know uh, eventually after uh, a few weeks then you can have uh, edible mushrooms ready to eat <laughs>